AMT's 1968 Opal GT coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another amazing unboxing video as we take a look at the AMT Ertl Opal GT from 1968. Now this little Buick was pretty cool. It was uh, built in Europe and brought over. Many people called it the little Corvette. So without further ado, let's open up the lid and investigate what's inside. So now we roll back the clock all the way to 1968, where we get to check out the amazing Buick Opel GT, which was also known as the Baby Corvette. And you can see that it's a very apparent in the way of the Coke bottle type front fenders and just the general sports carness of this thing. Now this model kit came out in 2002 from RC, or Racing Champs, I should say. And you can see some very cool looking uh, imagery here of the red model car on the front. There of course is the little Opel GT motor. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up. Will require some glue and paint, 100 plus parts, so quite detailed. I'll just turn this up again, you can see the edge of the box. And then on this side we have some special features called out. Basically a detailed engine, you can build this stock or custom street rod. Includes custom and stock hood with hinge. And then there we have the awesome image of the back of the Opel GT. So we'll just turn this around and crack the lid open very quickly. Inside, of course, we have our instruction sheet for the Buick Opel GT, which we'll take a look at in a little while. Here's our amazing little Opel body, looking very nice, as well as the interior. Then we have our undercarriage, basically a pan and style with the suspension molded in. Very nice. My favorite components, the chrome. We also have windshield glass and wheels and taillights and axles. Gee, <laughs> a lot of plastic bags. Okay, and then we've got, there's the hood with that cool hood scoop. The instrument panel and steering wheel. And then our little four cylinder engine. The seats and everything, the stock hood. And then another motor in here, looks like a little V6. Could be, Buick V6 of the era. And then we have our rear suspension here with the exhaust molded in. And then some engine components. And way in the bottom we have license plate decals. And we'll take a look at all this as we go through. So let me clear this out of the way and then we'll look at those plastic parts. Next up, we have our instruction sheet, and let's just open this up. It looks very tiny, but it's actually been folded a lot of times, <laughs> as you can see here. They should have just folded it in half this way, but, oh, they did. <laughs> okay, so here we go with the Opal instructions, which is really cool. So let's just zoom on down. We can see our engines here. So to start off with, we have the stock custom 1.9 liter four cylinder Opel engine. And as you can see, it's got a Solex carburetor, this really bizarre air cleaner. So the cleaner would be there and then this comes down and goes somewhere in the front. We've got a coil here for our engine, valve cover, the two halves of the engine block going together. The Solex carburetor, of course, is going to sit on this intake manifold, and the intake manifold sits on top of the exhaust manifold. Got this nice oil pan here. There's an emission control pump, your pulleys, your fan, your alternator, the front cover for the engine, and, of course, the distributor, four-cylinder style cap. Then as we move over here for our street rod, we do get the Buick V6 with a V6 carburetor, the intake manifold, Chrome valve covers on both sides, cylinder head, the two engine blocks with the transmission molded to the back. Then we have the starter, exhaust headers with the little plate you have to glue on, a V6 distributor, the water, or yes, the front cover, 
the alternator, the fan belts, and this little box style oil pan which goes up underneath. So then we crack this over into our interior and there we've got a roll bar with braces, shift lever that goes in, two bucket seats and your brake handle. Interesting, the back part here is sort of shaped like a 63 Corvette. We've got our steering wheel instrument panel. We have these two little interior front covers that go on there for your feet to sit in. Windshield washer or reservoir. And then we get our wheels. Then you actually have a choice of stock, stock wheels down here or these custom style. And then you have four vinyl tires and the wheel back. And then we get into the body section here with the windows, body, and the interior completed, popping together. And then you pop in your two tail lights into the back. And then we're getting into our stock and custom chassis over here in step five. So here your um, engine air cleaner is gonna glue into, actually goes through a hole here on the firewall. With the radiator molded in, radiator hose, the brake fluid reservoir. Then you've got your rear axle and suspension. What's it say? Trim off shaded area when using competition exhaust. So that's a stock exhaust. Then they have this competition exhaust. It splits down and gives you the double pipes from your V6. With of course the little trumpets at the back. The metal axle will go through the rear suspension. And then all this drops on top so you don't see that. You got front axle pins going in there. Then down here for your street rod. You have the brake fluid reservoir going in through that same hole that was the on the radiator. Oh, you reverse the radiator. You turn it around in there. Okay, and then there's the rear end. It's saying to remove that. And then you get this like straight muffler sort of pipe going in there. Looks like a cross brace in there. Oh, there was one up there too. <laughs> and then the little front axles will go in there. And then finally you've got your stock final assemblies right there so then we have our body with the corvette style rear bumperettes going on there and then there is a retainer for the hood because it had the hinge in the front the stock bumpers have the little pins sort of like a promotional style there's that hood going in there and then your side mirrors and it all goes together nice and then when you get your street rod you have this custom foiler which goes up over top of the rear window or along the rear window. The rear bumpers, which are a little bit different than the stock ones. Add in the spacer rings to the back because it's got different size wheels. Custom vents go in the rear windows. Then your mirrors. Then you've got that hood with the bulge in it. The custom gas tank. There's a grill going in here and a front spoiler. So a really cool little Opel GT. Now let's take a look at those gray plastic parts. So next up, we've got our little Opel GT body. And it's got a nice little GT emblem right there. As you can see, this is the side they clipped it off the parts tree. So there's some pegs in here that have to be removed. And then this uh, sanded flat, so it's like the other side here. Uh, good door handles in. And then you can see nice details under here, like, of course, this. Looks like a fuel filter cap. There's the emblem for the GT. Looking on the back, it's very cool. Very nice detail there. Again, the emblem. A um, little bit of flash hanging over the sides here, which is sort of to be expected when the mold process is got the back end in there. Uh, not too bad on the inside. There's a little bit of some lines in there that you'll have to use your number 16 hobby blade to get rid of a couple of mold marks underneath which again have to be removed to uh, get rid of the interference now if you ever seen these headlights in operation it's pretty cool you can always look them up on youtube google it there is an opal emblem right there and it's got those little cool vents and then under the hood there's a little vent right there but overall a very nicely sculpted little body Next we get into the chassis and you notice all the nice detail on here of all the ribs and the little cross braces and everything. There's our front suspension and then we've got this big air dam sitting right here. Or actually it's a rolled pan, body, underbody pan. 
But again, you can see all the nice, crisp, clean detail in there. And uh, the body will fit nicely on top. And then there's that sort of a shark mouth opening, I guess. Or f almost like a frog. <laughs> the headlights. But yeah, it, you can see it's going to be a nice fit going into there. And uh, it should have a good little ride height. And here we have the interior of our Opel GT. And notice the shape here. This is very much reminiscent of the 63 Corvette, with of course it, it uh, going into that point on the back of the roof. And now there's some interesting details in here. You can see this nice little vent here for the rear window defroster. Then they've got the door panels. Again, this is a tub, so the uh, detail here is not going to be very crisp. But it's good that it's still there. You've got the little map pop pocket going in there. Plus the rails for mounting your seat. The little thing for the um, parking brake. Little center console here with gear shift lever going in. And then they've got these long, long little pockets there. You can see some very raised uh, mold marks in here. That might be a bit of a pain to remove because again these are sitting on carpet. Underneath looks pretty good too, nice and smooth, and it's got the little fenders molded in. So again, nice detail for this model. Next up I have two parts trees that I'm going to be taking a look at at the same time, and the reason is because these are the parts that uh, go with that Buick V6, the custom engine. So there we've got our V6 with the transmissions, we've got our cylinder heads here, that's a clip for under the hood, there's the special exhaust, our rear axle, the body spacer clips, differential, um, the cross member for underneath on the differential. There's the other part of the, this exhaust system. There's our little radiator sitting there with the firewall. We've got our fan belts and pulleys, the distributor, the front cover for our engine, our intake manifold for on top. There's our exhaust pipes with the little um, supports there. And more mufflers and alternator carburetor i forget what the little squares are but anyway let's turn this up here into the camera so again you can look at the nice crisp detailing actually it's a little bit soft detailing but it does get the job done almost looks like a four to nine inch rear axle but i i know it wouldn't be of course this be european built turn it over a couple of bumps here on the back of the radiator wall and there's one in that hood clip so you might want to get rid of that for sure definitely anyway quite nice on those components and we'll bring back these ones you can see the intake manifold very small motor of course um, pretty crisp detail overall not bad at all. Whoops. <laughs> and next we have the stock components. And that differential that I just showed you is for the V6. This is the four-cylinder differential with, of course, the tailpipe and mufflers going on there. So there's the um, air cleaner, the fan, the carburetor, the uh, oil pan, the engine block, right and left hand side, the front cover, the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, radiator hose, fan belt and pulley, and then we have parts for our roll cage, and there of course is the bucket seats. So let's just take a look at the detail once more. You can see some nice ribs on that catalytic converter. Very good work. And then, whoops, we have our seats, the nice tuck and roll upholstery in there, the engine, again, soft detail on the transmission, starters molded in place, turning it over, you can, ooh, wow, look at the mold marks on here, and there is some flash, so of course all that will have to be removed, and uh, not too much on this side of the engine, the, the roll cage has some very pronounced mold pegs on there, which of course will have to be taken off and rounded just to make it all smooth. A little cross brace thing. I don't think that's part of the roll cage. 
I'll have to look it up again. Anyway, again, nice detail with a bit of work. It should look nice. And our final gray pieces are these three parts trees. And I decided to show them all at once, just for convenience, of course. So here we have a mixture of stock and custom components. We have these nice deep wheel backs for the different tires. There's these optional exhaust pipes for your V6. More like noodles. <laughs> the wheel backs, a couple little pegs. That would be your front air dam. That's that uh, spoiler in the back, or foiler, as they called it. This dashboard looks very much like a 1970 Corvette, or 68, I guess, same style. Same with the steering wheel. There's our stock hood with the little louvers and a little bulge here for the air cleaner to pop up a bit. Then we have our custom one with four hood pins and that big fiberglass style blower molded right in. The little covers for the interior, the side window vents, and again, a couple little uh, pin type retainers. Now I'm just going to move some of this out of the way here. Let's bring it up front here where the camera likes it. There's our stock hood. Ooh, wow. The mold buttons on this kit are massive. You take your number 16 hobby blade and push them off this way, then scrape over the top and you'll get rid of these things. There's no engine mat under here, but there is the little perimeter brace just to keep the hood from flopping around. Same with your foiler here. It's got those big bumps in. Let's see if we can get that. There you go. Yeah, so quite a bit of uh, work you're going to have to do just to get this right. These little pins must be for elevating something. Sometimes in these old kits there'll be uh, weird parts that have no explanation. They're from some earlier issue. There's little hood pins. Again, a little bit of a mat under there. But you got to remove those. Whoops. <laughs> and these ones you're going to see on the window. They are marked left and right, just so that you know. Yeah, so that's that. Now let's examine this dashboard. And again, have a look at that. Does that not look like a 60, basically a 68 to about 1980 style Corvette? 79 maybe. Quite cool, and that's part of the reason why they got that reputation as being little Corvettes. And then there's that steering wheel. So, a lot of really, really cool parts for our gray components. And now, let's see what's next. Next up, we get into my favorite components of all time, which of course are the chrome components. And like I was saying, there's a lot of pieces in here that I do believe were dropped for this particular edition. Although they wouldn't show up in earlier instructions or possibly later ones. I'm not sure what round two is doing with their release. But anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so here we have the stock wheels. And I do believe they were 13 inch at the time, being of course European. you got your rear taillights, disc brakes, your... Um, cylinder head cover for the four. Here's some moon hubcaps, wheels with moon hubcaps, and there only seems to be three. There's a steel rim and a couple of trim rings, the oil pan for the six cylinder, the grill, and a bunch of other goodies. Actually, there's two valve covers going on here. Anyway, let's bring this up into the camera. Ooh, there's even a chrome front engine cover for like a blower setup or something bizarre. Anyway, I'm sure a lot of you have had this kit before and can leave us some great comments down below so that other people know what I might be missing in this review as far as origins. I see some headlights in here. Uh, okay, so there's those cool looking 13 inch style um, <laughs> mag wheels. These, of course, look like they're more like 14s or 15s. Look at that nice grill detail. Use a little bit of a black wash in here just to bring that out. And there's another grill. Ah, it is a grill, so that's a custom grill. And then looking on the back, quite a lot of detail on those wheels. The posts for your metal axle to go into, of course. There's the little valve covers for the six cylinder. <laughs> Very tiny. Anyway, there's our chrome for our Opel GT. And here we have the glass for the 68 Opel GT. 
And like I was saying, again, this is very reminiscent of the 63 Corvette. If you guys go and look at my uh, review of that model kit, you will see that this is a one-piece glass. So you got your windshield and then these rails going into the back and the side windows. And then again, there are the rear taillights, and these ones are quite extended so to pass through the body, whereas these ones are sunken in for your custom. So again, I'm not sure if these are actually in our instructions, like the flatter custom ones, but I do know that there are many different versions of this Opel GT that have popped up through the years, so these may be leftovers from one of those kits. Now ordinarily I would do the decal sheet on its own, but this is all we get. So I thought I'd throw them in with the tires. Throw them under the tires? No, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, these tires are The Advantage by BF Goodrich, which BF Goodrich tires are kind of unique for these model cars, mainly because they're American models, but keep in mind that the Opel GT is a European car. You get these two nice metal axles in there. And then for the decal sheet, they are main license plates, 507105. They're both the same, except one is yellow, and the other one, of course, is white. But just quickly looking at the tires here, you can see they have raised letters, and then a nice tread pattern. And just like a mullet haircut, which is all business up front and party in the back, these tires <laughs> have the letter business up front, and nothing in the back for the party. So if you wanted plain wheels, I do believe you could have the party in the front. Or if you want the letters, then the party's in the back. So anyway, there's our nice little Opel GT tires and license plates. And that completes our look at the 1968 Buick Opel GT by AMT Ertl. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the Buick Opel GT from 1968. And don't forget to tune in next week when we'll be taking a look at some more cars from 1968. We're just starting a brand new year here for 68, of course. So don't forget uh, once again to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Let's get this video up to 100 likes. And don't forget to check us out if you want to see our great selection of model cars at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.